All right, let's talk about how we can bring our pivot tables to life with conditional formatting. Now, this is a four star, rather advanced tip, and that's only because there are some nuances here that make conditional formatting with pivot tables a little bit trickier than conditional formatting with standard cell values. So we're gonna start by adding conditional formatting rules, those same old familiar rules from the home tab, data bars, color scales, icon sets, etc to highlight patterns or trends in the pivot table itself, kind of like this. In this case, we've added formatting to visualize patterns in average prices and average point ratings for different wines for a given filtered country, in this case, Canada. Now, unlike traditional cell formatting, we can actually specify some options for how the pivot table format reacts to changes in the table layout. So in other words, these options here allow us to determine the scope of the formatting that we've applied. So you can scope that formatting to a selected range of cells, to all cells for that given metric, in this case, average price, or to all cells for that given metric and those specific row labels, which is wine name in this case. Now, generally speaking, I prefer that second option, all cells showing these particular values. And what that's gonna do is allow that format to stick even if we pull wine name out of the row labels and a different field like wine variety in. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like as soon as we jump into Excel. But quick summary of the common use cases, using color scales to draw attention to patterns or trends in the data and applying formatting rules in general that stick regardless of how your pivot table layout changes. So with that, let's jump into Excel and practice applying some custom conditional formats to our pivot table. All right, so if you'd like to follow along, open up your pro tip workbook and head to the conditional formatting demo in the gray pivot table tips section. And here you'll find a wine related pivot. We're looking at wine names on row labels. And for each of these wines, we're tracking the average price and the average point rating. And as you can see here, we're filtered only to look at Canadian wines specifically. Now, the idea is to turn this from a plain old table into a visual tool that we can use to identify the best combinations of price and point rating. In other words, I wanna create some sort of a tracking tool to help me draw attention to those wines that are affordable and very highly rated. And to do that, we're gonna apply some conditional formatting rules like color scales and data bars. So let's start with our average price column here. Generally speaking, I would suggest selecting the first row here and using something like the control shift arrow down shortcut to highlight all of the values within that column. But in this case, for the sake of demonstration, I'm just gonna select a chunk of data here, about 10 rows or so. Now watch what happens when I apply a conditional format, in this case, a color scale. And since low prices are good, in this case, I want those low prices to be green. I'm gonna choose this second option here, red, yellow, green. And when I click, you'll notice this little pop-up appear right where we would normally see something like the autofill options. And this is a special pivot table formatting menu that allows us to determine the scope of this formatting rule. So by default, it's set to the selected cells that I had dragged out, but I have two other options here as well. Any cell showing average price values, regardless of the row labels, or any cell showing average price values specifically for wine names. So to show you an example, let's choose that third option. And you can see that it's applied it down to every cell in the column, even though I'd only selected about 10 or 11 cells. But watch what happens now. If we take wine name out, we pull wine variety in, that formatting is lost because we had determined the scope to only format when we were looking at both average price and the wine name specifically. So let's go ahead and swap variety back out, wine name back in, and there's our formatting again. Now, we can't get to that same pop-up menu anymore right now, but we can access those same tools by heading to conditional formatting, manage rules, and we can edit this color scale that we just created, and you'll see those same three options right here at the top of our list. So instead of this third option here, let's select all cells showing average price values. Again, regardless of the row or column labels. Press OK, apply that rule. 
As we can see, nothing changes, but now watch what happens. Pull wine name out, wine variety in, and check it out. The formatting sticks, even though we swapped in different row labels. So generally speaking, that's the scope that I like to apply um, when I'm playing with formats in pivot tables. And let's just revert back so that we're looking at wine names again. Now let's focus on this point rating column here. So same thing, I can select one cell, I can select multiple cells, the whole column, whatever you choose. In this case, I want data bars, okay? So instead of a standard data bar option, there's some other values here, other options that I'd like to customize. So I'm actually gonna go into more rules at the bottom of that menu. And here again, we can access these scope options here. Let's choose the second option. And instead of showing the actual point rating as text, let's only show the data bars by checking that box. And because there's a very narrow range of scores here, it's really nothing under 75 or 80 and nothing above 100, let's set a minimum number of 75 just to more clearly see the differences between these bars. Now, last but not least, I'm gonna give it kind of a dark blue color and this one's totally up to you and press OK. And there you have it, it's applied those custom data bars all the way through the column, just like you'd expect. So now the purpose of our tool is starting to kind of emerge, right? We're looking for low price wines at the top of the list that also have a high point rating based on the size of this bar. So we see some pretty good options here, some great options there, a good one here. One last thing that we can do to really take this to the finish line is apply one more rule to this point rating column. Let's go into conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and let's basically say any of these cells that are greater than 90 points, let's give it a green fill with a green text, press OK, and then click the pop-up and apply it to all cells showing average point rating values. And check it out, that just highlighted any of these cells here with a point rating of 91 or greater. So we can see that these Canadian wines can get some really good high rated wines for very low price points, only $17 in these cases, $18 in these. And now because we've built this tool and because we've applied these formatting rules to a dynamic, flexible pivot table, it means that we can do something like this. Instead of looking at Canadian wines, maybe we wanna look at Italian wines. Press okay, all of our same formatting rules apply automatically, which is incredible. So now let's scroll through these Italian wines. As we can see, nothing above 90 yet, until we get to, here we go. So here's the first row that was flagged as a 91 point wine. This is a 2010 Chianti Classico for $12. So we basically just created a nice little tool that allows us to identify these great opportunities to get high rated wines for a very affordable price. And there you have it, bringing your pivots to life using conditional formats.